another day, another extremely hot day, I'm sheltering in as much of the garage as I can get because I think it's only about 11 o'clock and it's really, really chuffing warm to the extent that I'm in my swim trunks, sweating like a complete bitch. Um, I don't really like the heat. I much prefer freezing cold days, if I'm honest. Uh, so I'm limiting myself to stuff that I can do that involves minimal physical activity, which is my natural way of doing things anyway. So I have just been fitting stuff up onto the bulkhead. That I think was in the last bit I did. Another powder coated bracket for the fuel filter um, holder. I think that was where the carbon canister would have gone. So I don't actually need that bit. Probably should have trimmed that off before the unit went for powder coating. The bonnet bracket sorry a bonnet switch and the inertia switch on that little one there everything's held on with stainless screws or cap head bolts because it just makes it look that bit more motorsport in the back we have my newly painted dog bone thingy engine mount <coughs> this side got the other one all in so that engine is now dead solid the I'm well out of sequence in my different editing of all the different videos and I've kind of lost track as, as I've gone along but um, so much so in fact I can't even find them, there they are, right yeah I'm fitting the T28 turbo obviously that is the original T25 actuator has an adjustable end but it's a straight reach that's the T28 actuator Non-adjustable in terms of length, different eyelet size holes for the actual wastegate arm. Here we have a forge uh, rebuildable actuator. You can get these as piston or diaphragm. Um, I've gone for diaphragm because it's just um, a lot more predictable. I think piston you typically have like on the higher um, boost applications it's got a standard green spring in it because I'm running standard boost ish so if it needs adjusting it can be adjusted later on it has the dog leg arm and an eyelet with the correct diameter for my wastegate arm so it's also adjustable in length whereas that one wasn't basically I need to modify that bracket somehow so that it will bolt up to the compressor housing and yet still reach the wastegate arm down there somewhere uh, so that will probably need a little bit of titivating or bodging as we like to call it the compressor housing is over here and it was looking pretty crappy and old so I thought I'd tickle it with the um, wire wheel and it's coming up really lovely almost looks like you've painted it so I'm doing that incredibly gently because I don't want to damage it and I'm staying well away from that side because obviously that's where it seals and once it's done it's all gonna have to be blasted out with the airline to make sure that that is whistle clean but yes once that's clean I'll then start modifying the mounts for that actuator um, in other news one thing that was really holding me back was the oil feed line oil supply line from the block into the turbo core it's still not fully sorted but basically I was having trouble getting a union to go um, into the turbo that's 7 sixteenths by 24 but with a dash 3 a.m. end on it for here everyone I got sent was wrong so basically I found a really good company in Wales called Talks I'll put a link in below but they've just been incredibly helpful I basically sent them two unions one end of one was good the other end of the other one was good and i said have you got anything that will match between the two and they're pretty confident they've got it so they're going to post it out next week so that will be good and then hopefully the oil feed and drain will be sorted coolant outlet is the standard one that's just boshed in there i need to make a coolant in um the original one corroded and snapped off so i'll need to in fact there it is i'll need to modify that or find another fitting that will screw onto there with a tail and then i'll just run a little line to it i don't know whether you saw that because it's in the bright sunlight but that's that's the bit i'm talking about I need to make something to do that same job anyway i'm gonna go and get a big cold drink just taking the turbo off the car brought it into the workshop to get out of the heat um, <clears throat> the original 
actuator would have bolted onto the compressor on those two lugs. Because I've rotated the compressor housing relative to the core, that is now nowhere near the wastegate lever rod or arm. So our actuator needs to be hanging over here somewhere. And of course there's nothing to bolt it onto. You can't just drill and tap into the compressor housing. The original T25 arrangement, the bracket for the actuator is actually using the um, same bolts as hold the compressor to the core. So what I could do is either modify that kind of bracket because I don't need this anymore and then re-bolt this to that or I can modify this extensively so that I have an arm that comes all the way around, holds this in free air and maybe make a little stabiliser bracket off the back side. The only problem is I've got to be conscious of how much space I've got between the turbo compressor housing and the actual engine block because this is quite a lot bigger turbo and the manifold that it hangs off is still meant for the smaller turbo so it's all a bit of a puzzle I don't know quite what I'm going to do yet but I'll do some head scratching and show you the final result. Just separated the forge actuator from its bracket because that was never going to work. I've been out to the car and I have now marked where that position is there that if the barrel or the outer chamber of that actuator is just hanging off there then it just clears the block and I end up with a fairly straight run down to the wastegate actual uh, actuator arm, not the actuator, but the, you know what I mean, that bit that does that. Um, the boost sensing port or action port will need to be rotated, but that's fine because I can just undo these and put them where I want them. Now it's a case of fabricating a little bracket that will pick up on that lug, that lug, have a curve shape to hold the compressor housing to the core, same as these bits do but then we'll also have holes in it for the actuator rod to pass through and also those little M6 studs as well and then uh, yeah so I'm going to make up a cardboard template and then probably going to have some lunch and cool off a bit it's very 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 hot well it's a pity cardboard's flammable and flexible because that would have worked lovely so that's what I need to make in metal now. I've basically marked up everything I need, but it's just so goddamn hot. I can't be bothered to do it right now. I've got to go cool off, and later on this afternoon, when it's cooled down a bit, I'll mark that out of probably um, two mil steel, chop it, shape it, drill it, bolt it on, and then hope it fits in the engine bay. Getting seriously low on chunky steel, so I'm using this off cut, which I think is about two mil, just couldn't get enough out to um, make this bit. It is impossibly hot. I think it's 31 degrees in our kitchen. God knows what it is outside, but it's warm. Nearly done with fabrication. I just need to drill that centre hole out larger. Because that little dust seal goes through there. And then the rod goes through the middle. You can see on the old one that came with it, that needs to be about 12 mil. So I've just got my step drill in the end of here. Put that back in the vise. That's my hairy knee. I don't know why I'm doing this one-handed. I could just put the camera down. But I feel like I've been depriving you of action shots in recent weeks because I'm not using the GoPro so much because I broke it. But step drill are cool, I love them. I really need a bigger one, this goes up to 12 mil, where are we? There, but um... Such an efficient little thing. They don't seem to blunt off the same way, they're harder to burn out as well. I mean, that's always the problem with drilling with a hand drill where you don't have proper control over the speed. I was around helping Matt with his cabriolet yesterday, or the day before, and he's only got a high speed like drill that you would use for drilling a hole in a wall or 
big chunks of wood or something, so all of his drill bits are basically burnt out and blunt. Mine, I tend to just snap them, if I'm honest. But yeah, little battery drill like that. Oh, I'm rambling again, maybe it's the heat. Anyway, that's done. I need to check the whole alignment, sand that lower edge um, until it fits gently around the compressor housing and butts up on the core without you know still inside of that line there which is quite difficult to explain and then deburr it put a fold in it check that the actuator and everything fits back on the car back out of the folder boing, boing, boing. hopefully that's somewhere close it doesn't always like doing short bits in the middle but um, it's not major critical. We can straighten it with the vice afterwards if we need to. I just need to bend that the other way and we should be done. Right, well, I'm not one to blow me on trumpet. Because for one, I'm just not that flexible anymore. But when you offer this up, which is very difficult to do, it's actually quite heavy now, that fits perfectly. The um, actuator head clears the block by a nax cock, and I mean like fag paper thin. The bracket is all nicely on there, everything lines up pretty well. We just need to radius a couple of those corners off, paint it in high temp paint, um, fit my little grommety thing. And then it can finally be bolted up and put in the car. I'll also finish cleaning off the outside with the wire wheel on the end of the thing and me what's it. But yeah, good result. So that's all on and done. That's been painted in silver paint, VHT, whatever it is. I can't remember what I've done with it. Basically, well, it's in that box somewhere. Very high temperature silver. What have I done with it? It's probably outside. Anyway, um, all I've done now is taken the cap off, you can see the diaphragm springs inside and I'm just rotating it until that port points upwards which is where I need it really for my car and I might actually, what will I do, probably something like that, yeah, something like that. It's looking more and more like a finished turbo installation. The only other thing left to do to this, really, before I can bolt it up, and I probably could bolt it up now, it's just that it's going to be a lot easier doing it now, is sort out what the hell I'm going to do for a water feed, because that's the original water feed off a T25. The pipe had corroded. Um, it doesn't need to be anything particularly clever. We're now well away from the heat. Well, not well away, but, you know, I can run a coolant pipe along there and it's not going to be burnt on anything. I think what I might do is just cut the end of that off and then clean it up and see if I can put some sort of bead in it and then I'll just connect the water pipe straight to that. Just cut that down, offered it up and it's all looking quite good. Um, there's no rust in this bit which is nice and originally it would have been supported by something but I don't actually think it needs it particularly because this just takes like one small coolant hose that's strapped up higher up anyway so um, I think what I'll do is I'll just remember that this is not super rigid in there um, and then I'll just support the silicon hose higher up so yeah it's all good I've cleaned it off and I cut it just where the braze was there so I've ended up with a little lip so it can't blow off with pressure so I'm going to paint that up now. I'm going to use the engine enamel because it's smooth and then I'll probably paint over the top of that with silver to give it some sort of heat reflectivity. Turbo coolant feed is up there drying. Down here we have the gas gold coilover unit which I semi refurbished. New uh, platforms, lock rings, rather fetching top mount. Um, that's the hub. I'm just putting those back together. That side's already done and on the car. I'm not connecting the lower arm or the steering rack yet because I still need to feed the drive shafts in. Um, I have picked up some more ones, but I need to change the CV. Uh, no, 
yeah, pull the CV joint end off and fit new um, ABS reluctor rings. Because um, this is four drive shafts I've got, and then I've got another two in the boot of the car. Some of those are off Rover 800, some of those off our MGZRs or Rover 220 Turbo, so I've got a real mixed bag, and I need to mix and match until I end up with the right length, with the right ABS ring, and with the least amount of play. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh, got those legs in, both sides, that's done. I think a little bit further down the line, once the turbo is in, I can start putting the radiator in. So that's the new Alley Rad. There's its outer bracket, which has been blasted and powder coated. There's a little upper support rail, this one, um, and it had a little round hole for the original radiator um, pipe to pop through, uh, which I've now had to enlarge and elongate because the alley one has quite a different profile elbow on the end so it needed to be enlarged for that to come through but all in all quite a successful day despite it being unbelievably hot so um, I'm now going to go and have a nice cold beer it's another day and once again one step forward or two steps forward one step back um, I posted pictures of my lovely bracket with which I was super proud and I posted them on Facebook and Dan Blewett who's like a very knowledgeable chap on these and runs I think it's called KBL Tuning he goes that's going to need some bracing and I was like uh oh yeah he's probably right basically in there's like a big spring and when you get vacuum on there or no pressure sorry it um, pushes that open so obviously hand strength it's already pretty tough so basically I can just about move it one-handed left hand but basically I'm going to need to put a brace in here or some gussets or something just to stiffen it up my bracket is made of probably two mil and when you look at some of the other brackets that came off the originals they're probably three so um, whilst it would have been lovely to start off the day by doing something super constructive like bolting the whole turbo in I am in fact going to have to take that bracket off weld some gussets in and do it before it gets hot outside because it's probably about half nine ten o'clock now and um, it's already pretty warm just as a further illustration of wobbliness you can see it's bending about that point there so my intention is to put a flat strip right across that end. I'll still be able to get that nut on and off and then I'll do something similar, just put a flat strip, like a triangle in here. There's not very much bending at all um, in this axis, or not axis, but across that radius there. And by the time I've got a gusset across this end, um, any bending will be, you know, countered by the bit of flat which goes across there um, and that's so close to where that rod is actuating that I think that'll be good so yeah I'm gonna go get the welder get my grinder cut a strip of flat to go across there and make a little triangular gusset to go in there and then we should be good welcome to James's fabrication shop um, all high-tech ouch we have vice, we have cinder block. I really need to mount that on a wheelie chair, as somebody suggested. I haven't done it yet. That's gusset number one. That will go in there, like so. Fuck, that's still hot. I forget on a hot day how long it takes for everything to cool down. Oh, burns are good for you. All right, there's gusset number one. That'll go in like that. Gusset number two is ugly, but that will go in somewhere like that. Um, because the rod is only a very short distance up from there, really isn't a lot of bending moment, so um, they might look a bit weedy, but actually, when you think about it, the way this is mounted on this car, it doesn't need a huge amount. So, yeah, you've only got an offset of about uh, 20 mil to that bolt, and by the time the bolt head, probably 18 mil, so really, I probably didn't need to go this mental, but 
um, we're going to do it anyway. Mr. Migwelder has come out to play and I've relocated down to workshop number two. Um, that gusset is just wedged in there with a little magnet and I'm going to tack it in a couple of places and then I'll do, oh, cock, I'll do the main welding from um, the other sides once the magnet is out of the way. The other one, this one, um, I'm going to kind of tack it and weld it as I go, just kind of making it up. The wind has got up, which is fantastic because it was boiling hot. So that's good in one way, but bad in another because it's probably going to blow my shielding gas away. But I don't really want to go into the depths of the workshop or the garage because I can't see what I'm doing in there. So kind of snot and hope again. And this time I'm going to try and do some what I used to do, which was video my welding as people seem to find that useful. <laughs> Crumbs, that's a long way away. Right, you might accidentally get a shot of my butt in my swimming trunks, but you know, I have to suffer the pain of doing this, so you have to suffer the pain of watching me do it. Right, oh, crumbs, there we go. Got two fairly heavy tacks, and then I'm just going to run a seam along here, then I'll turn it round and run a seam down there as well, and then that will be more than enough. Uh, where am I going to put the camera? I should put the camera over yonder. Look, TIG welding. Mm. It's not actually TIG, it's a MIG, but it kind of looks like the TIG if you can get the weld right and overlap them. Uh, right, next bit, do the other one. Obviously, I wasn't as careful trimming this one up. It's a bit long, but I'm gonna tack it in a couple of places trim it down and then weld it properly or I might just weld it properly and trim it down afterwards um, I don't know we'll see what happens as it welds
Praise the Lord, we are done with welding, hopefully for today. It's too hot for welding, much too hot. We have got, um, that's stuck on there, needs a little bit of a clean up, but um, what I did was because I couldn't be bothered to go and trim that down nicely, I just slapped a massive slug of weld down the inside. So those two are definitely joined together. Now just linish that smooth. Um, the wind blew my shielding gas away at the start and I think there was a bit of crap in the gun so it went and did a big jizzy lump on there. But yeah, it's on. Go and trim it down, sand it, make it look pretty, paint it with VHT silver paint again, bolt it up, put it in the car, yada 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 yada. Okay, so that is up there. Drawing gently, I just painted it in um, Oh, uh, what's it called? That's it, VHT Silver. I also did that water pipe thing. Then last night I got bored and I was fed up and I came down here and I sanded through the turbo writing on the top of the inlet manifold, which looks rather nice. I was going to paint it with like red but um, I decided that would look a bit shite and French and council like old Renaults or something so I decided to leave it silver. Anyway, while that's going off I will rip off the old inlet manifold and bolt the new one on. Before... Ta-da! After. Looks much better. Still looks quite understated. Somebody suggested lacquering it and I probably should have done but I didn't bother. I'll just accept that periodically I'll have to run a bit of sandpaper across it. That's actually my preference because I find lacquer never really sticks well in engine bays, especially the stuff I can get in a rattle can. So um, yeah, that's on. I'm going to continue messing around with that turbo, get it ready to put in. Right, bracket is on, actuator is on, and that looks really rather motorsport, doesn't it? The only way that could get better if I drilled speed holes in it but I'm not going to do that because I'm not an idiot but um, one thing that's always slightly puzzled me with this turbo this is a T28 and it's off my black Nissan S14 import um, I blew up the original engine and I bought an S15 engine which came with its own turbo which I knew to be a roller bearing turbo this I don't know whether it's a roller bearing one or not I've done some research on the internet looking at the label and the, the numbers on it down there uh, which I don't know whether you can see but there's a little stamped label it, I'm getting conflicting information some sources say yeah it's a roller bearing because it's off an import car others say no they, none of them even the import ones got um, roller bearing turbos till the S15 came out I'm told if you spin that with no oil in it if it's a journal bearing then it'll just stop if it's a roller bearing it'll keep spinning so if i spin it it keeps you know it does spin to an extent there's no obvious four and a half play but oh, i don't know i'm guessing it's not a uh, roller bearing one the only difference it would make is that if it was a roller bearing one i would need to fit a one millimeter restrictor in the line that goes from the block into the turbo. If you don't, apparently they just smoke a lot because it's pushing oil through the bearing into the outlet and then you get smoke coming out of your exhaust. So I'm going to assume it's not a roller bearing turbo. Shove it in. If I do have a problem, then I'll just have to fit a restrictor later on. I don't know how much more I'm going to do today because I'm right in the sun and it is unbelievably chuffing hot and although I'm still just in my swim trunks I am going to get incinerated um, that is all in there sort of semi loose still because um, although I'm super happy with how the actuator turned out my little bracket you can just see uh, where are we what am I looking at uh, there we go you can see that it's a Nats cock off, but you can still fit daylight between. Oh, I'm not doing a very good job of this. Hold on, let's zoom out. Oh, right, 
but yeah you can just see there's clearance between the actuator and the block which is good down on to the side the there's no gasket in there yet I'm still mocking up I've got new studs to go in the cookie downpipe as they're known is not quite touching that housing but it is extremely close there's still movement and of course this should all be rigid there's a flexi in the system further back so if it doesn't move now or it doesn't touch now it shouldn't in the future but like I say I'm burning up here so I'm gonna go in and I'm probably gonna upload this as one video now um, yeah, I think I've got enough footage. See you later.